Right then, let's go for a quick spin in the Mini. So, I like the way you start it, you use that little toggle switch there, which is a bit like a, a rocket launcher <laughs> in an airplane. So, this is the automatic, and it's the 1.5 litre three cylinder diesel Cooper D. Now, let's first of all talk about the automatic. Personally, if I was going to get a Mini, I would have the manual because changing gear just adds to the whole enjoyment, and this car is primarily designed to be a fun thing to drive. But if you do not want to shift gears yourself, the automatic is a really good one. So if you put your foot down, it responds pretty quickly and it changes gears nice and smoothly. The engine, this 1.5 litre diesel, it's got more than enough power. So 0 to 60 takes under 10 seconds and it should give pretty blooming good economy as well. However, I wouldn't go for one of the diesels. If you want, there is a slightly low power version of this engine and a two litre diesel, but this car suits a petrol, you know, like, like with the gearbox really. The Mini's supposed to be fun to drive and a petrol engine is just more fun. So you can get a 1.5 litre turbo petrol and that for me is the engine to have. It's got just about enough performance. I wouldn't go for the two litre in the Cooper S. Now, had we been talking about the previous generation Mini, I would have gone for the Cooper S because the 1.6 litre turbo petrol really suited the car. But the two litre just that feels a little bit heavy. In fact, the whole car is more grown up than the previous Minis. Yes, it will go round and round about all day long like this. Are you starting to feel sick yet? <laughs> and there's hardly any body roll at all. It grips nicely, but it still doesn't feel quite as agile or as playful as its predecessors, the Mark I and the Mark II BMW Minis. It's just more grown up. The benefit of that though is that the well the ride is slightly better so the old car really used to bounce over bumps and yeah when you compare this to something like a ds3 or an audi a1 the ride is still rather firm but it's not as bad as before and if you want you can actually get adaptive dampers which do help things somewhat but still yeah it's it's not the most comfortable car in its class also when you're going on a, a long journey you can get a little bit annoyed with the tyre roar. Don't know if you can pick it up on this mic, but it is really noisy. On the flip side though, this, this cabin is lovely to sit in. The seats are great. The design of the dash, I really like it. You should have a good look around that actually. And all the cutesy, cool switches and the ambient lighting around there. I like the infotainment system as well. And it's very easy to operate with this dial down here. It's basically just Mini's version of BMW's iDrive system, which I think is the best on the market. In fact, in terms of interior quality for a small car, the Mini is the best on the market. It's really, really good. Very nice thing to sit in. And visibility is quite good. The windscreen is quite away from you, but you can see the corners of the car nice and easy, which makes it great for manoeuvring around town. And you know, that's where the Mini's great. Whizzing around town. Brilliant little car. You know, some flaws, it won't be for everyone, but if you like a car that's fun to drive, that's nimble and agile and relatively peppy, it's a great choice. Now, I hope you enjoyed that very quick 360 degree video in the Mini. If you want more video content on the Mini, just click in the top right hand corner of the screen on the card.